Buongiorno, my loves. I am Carmen Westbrook. I'm one of the co-creators of this course that you are taking right now. And I'm here to welcome you to the course and also to explain a little bit about the foundations of the course and kind of what we're looking for as we're stepping into this first meeting together. So as part of the design that we create in all of our courses, uh, we incorporate our archetypal leadership models. And we're gonna go through that a little bit today. It's going to maybe seem a little bit overwhelming at the beginning and we're hoping that we'll be able to break it down so that you can see what that is and how it's gonna help you as we're going forward in this growth journey. So to begin with, this is our archetypal leadership model. And basically the archetypes talk about these different parts that we hold inside of ourselves that are known almost like bases or facets of our personality. So for the feminine archetypes, we have the maiden, we have the temptress, we have the mother, and we have the crone. And for the masculine archetypes, we have the sun, we have the hero, we have the king, and we have the wizard. So why is this important? Why is it important to even talk about archetypes? So archetypes are really, really fundamental to understanding uh, human psychology. Jung was really, really into archetypes. Um, understanding human psychology, what's going on inside of ourselves. And the reason that we look at that and even care about that is because that stuff that's going on inside of ourselves is what drives us. And it, it's what drives all the people that are around us as well. And so whenever we're going on any kind of a journey where we are growing into something new, no matter what that new thing is, we want to understand what it is that's driving us Maybe what it is that might be holding us back from achieving that. Maybe, maybe that thing has been holding us back for a while and we've been really wanting to go forward and grow in that way. And then also maybe what it is that's holding back the people that are around us and how do we interact with that? You know, maybe, maybe they're actually um, kind of in this space of possibly holding us back or we're feeling like maybe they're holding us back. So how do we interact with that? How do we grow together and grow that system? So archetypes are really, really, really fundamental to understanding what it is that's going on inside of ourselves and others, and then they actually serve us as we're growing. So the four feminine archetypes are the maiden, the temptress, the mother, and the crone. Um, and it can be kind of hard sometimes for us to grapple with our feminine archetypes because um, many of them are actually not really accepted out there in society. And so if we have parts of ourselves that maybe didn't feel very accepted in society, um, we might have tried to shut off that archetype. And whenever we do that, we stymie our own growth. And so we definitely bring in the archetypes. We're going to bring this in throughout all of this training and, and, and kind of give you guys some examples of these archetypes and also show you how it helps us as we're going through a growth journey. So what is the growth journey that we're talking about here? So this is the growth journey that, that we take everyone through in any of our courses. Um, and it's basically the heroic journey that was created by Joseph Campbell um, about 100 years ago. And it's modified to also include the heroine's journey, the female parts of that, that journey, that growth journey. Basically, this is just any time that we're looking to grow, any time that um, something new is happening to us, this is the journey that we go through. It, it is. It's, um, Joseph Campbell looked at this and looked at myths and religions and stories from the beginning of you know, written history and uh, outlined what this journey actually was. What were the crucial stages to any type of growth that we're going through? And whenever we're, we're called to take a course like this or go through something that, um, like a new project that we're wanting to take on, that is growth. In some way, there is a part of us that is yearning for growth in that way. So how do we make that easier, make it maybe a little bit less intimidating, make it more fun? How do we do that? We, we make sure that we include this growth model. We understand this growth model so that we understand what it is that's coming next. I think a really good example for me 
was um, the very first time that I gave birth, that I had a baby. It was like the craziest thing that had ever happened to me. <laughs> and I had no idea what was happening. <laughs> And um, I remember I, I, I didn't use any kind of medication. And I remember at a certain point looking at my husband and just being like, I just don't think I can do this. Like, I literally, I don't think that I could do this. And he just looked at me and he said, yes, you can. I know that you can. And that's all I needed to hear at that point, which makes sense when we look at the, the growth journey now, I can tell where I was in that growth journey at that point. If I had known about this growth journey at that point, or if I'd applied it to this extremely growing experience of giving birth to a child, it might've made more sense. And the second time that I had a child, I knew what to expect. I knew what was coming. And it was just so much smoother of a process simply because I knew it was coming. So in honor of that, we have this chart in your workbooks that you'll find there in your workbooks. And it's a good one to refer to throughout all of life actually, and definitely throughout this journey that we're going through together, because it's going to help with understanding what's happening and where you are in that journey. So we have at the beginning an invitation, it's kind of a call to action. It's an invitation into a journey, into some kind of a growth. And you get some kind of a guide there along the way. So we are going to be serving as, to a certain degree, your guides, at least for part of this process. And then you cross the threshold and you become aware of you had an old story. There was some kind of old story that was there and we're moving into the new. You're going to have challenges and temptation. There will be doubts and disbeliefs. This is when I looked at my husband and said, I don't think I can do this. And what we need during that time, are we need those people that are going to champion us. Um, and then we have this time of being othered and we have some kind of death and rebirth that we go through as we're transformed into this new thing that we are working to grow into. Um, and so example, I was growing into being a um, physical mother to my child at that point. And so that was a transformation that I underwent there. Um, when I wrote my first book, I was transforming myself into an author. That was a transformation that I was going through there. Uh, and then we needed some acceptance and forgiveness, a little bit of spiritual understanding and awareness. We, we get some kind of a gift from going through that experience. And then we are to bring that gift and that new story back into our community. And that's right up here at the, at the top where we go through the atonement. So that might be a lot to handle and to swallow right now. I don't expect for you to understand all of this right now. Uh, and this is just so that you have an overview of what it is that we're going to be going through throughout this course. Okay. Um, and we will go, we will continue to explain this too. So one of the things that's really important when we're thinking about this growth journey is we need to understand who we need to almost be on the inside in order to facilitate that growth from happening. And this is what we're going to be talking about today specifically for who we need to be when we are starting out on a growth journey. And this is where the archetypes come in handy. So when we are starting out on that growth journey and going through uh, any new thing that we're looking at, the archetype that we need to embody in the feminine archetypes is the archetype of the maiden. Okay, so this is an archetype that we don't really accept very well in society these days. It's one that we don't really, we're not really okay with. It actually feels very unsafe for women to even be in that sort of maiden archetype. Uh, and it's an incredibly, incredibly powerful archetype for when we're going through growth. Why is that? This is because the, maid, the main characteristics of the maiden are the feelings of faith and trust. And whenever we are going into a new experience, into a new growth experience, in order to answer that call that we're hearing coming to us, in order to answer that call, we have to have those feelings present. They are very important feelings that we need to have present inside of ourselves and that we need to be able to actually put out to the other people that are around us as well, because otherwise we can really get stuck. We can kind of like get to this point where we're not ready to take that leap. We're hearing the call. We're hearing something that's saying, I want you to do this thing, or I'm feeling so called to do this thing out there. I don't know why. And this is when we need to really embody those feelings of faith and trust inside of ourselves to answer that call to adventure. 
there's some way that we're wanting to grow and we need to answer that call. Otherwise we can feel really anxious. We can start feeling really depressed. We can start feeling very, very stuck in our lives. And so when, that's why we need to really make sure that we're honoring this growth that is, that is being called forth in us. And that one of the easiest ways to do so is by embodying the maiden archetype inside of ourselves and creating those feelings of faith and trust. So how do we do that? So a really good way of understanding the archetypes and understanding what this means is by watching movies. Movies are powerful, images are powerful. Um, and there's a really, really, really good movie that I bet all of you know that's out there that is very specific about the maiden archetype. When you think about it, who might be a good maiden archetype in movies that you've seen? All right, there we go. They're so white. So what are the feelings that came up for you while you're watching this? I can tell you. <laughs> my feelings, especially at the beginning, were like, oh, Snow White. Pull it together a little bit. Like, come on. Stop being so naive. Like, stand up and work for something, you know? Um, <laughs> This tells you that this archetype for me is a hard one for me to pop myself into. Uh, I even, I have a daughter and it was really hard for me when she was little for me to accept herself as being kind of that, ah, ah, that sort of helpless maiden thing. It really, it's, it's one that I struggle with. I was taught, especially uh, when I was growing up, that it wasn't okay for me to be a maiden because it was unsafe for me to be that sort of little girl. Uh, and it's still one that I, I definitely do some eye rolling when I, when I see that archetype being played out. And I have to remind myself, I have to do some, a little bit of self-management to remind myself constantly of this is an important archetype that is a part of me. And whenever I want to grow, which I want to all the time, I have to embody this archetype. I have to come to terms with myself being some kind of being a helpless maiden in some way. Uh, and you know, it's interesting because a lot of the, like if you think of Disney princesses, a lot of the Disney princesses as they're, um, as they're especially embodying that maiden at the beginning, they're very, they're very enticing to animals. And that is that maiden archetype. It's a very inviting, inviting archetype for us to have. Everybody wants to dive in and help out, which is great because we need helpers along this time of the journey, especially when we're really stepping out in faith. So you think a little bit about this maiden archetype and about what that means for yourself. As you're coming into this first meeting, who do you need to be? If you need to be that sort of doe-eyed, you know, snow white that's coming in, um, and that will help you be there, then I invite you to be there. It helps me. That's where I go to whenever I start something new. Uh, I set aside all of my previous experience, which I have a ton of, and all of my own personal um, leadership and coaching and, and parenting experience. I set it all aside and come in as that sort of doe-eyed maiden so that I'm ready to learn and to grow. And, uh, and I know that I can learn from anyone that's around me. And we also invite you to trust us. We have an incredible amount of experience and training as we're going through and doing all these kind of things. And we are exceptionally good at holding spaces where we can hold all of the stuff that, uh, that people bring in and all of the projects and all of the dreams and the hopes and the everything that people are bringing into this space, we know how to hold that space and hold it with that faith and that trust with each other and create those kind of communities too, which are communities that we really, really, really need. So as you're going into this first meeting, 
I invite you to think about that maiden archetype and think about this amazing journey that you are being called upon. Think about the gifts that you are being called to bring back into the world and just how much the world desperately needs those gifts and, and find sort of that that motivation to go into that maiden archetype, even if it's maybe hard for you as it is for me, um, and think about what it is that you're bringing into this space. And as we're leaving, I'm gonna give you one of my favorite songs for getting myself into the maiden archetype, because songs are also really, really helpful. Just as, just as Snow White said, a smile and a song are, is really, really helpful with getting us into that place. And we're, we'll, We'll hope that you'll be bringing that space into our first meeting and we're so looking forward to having you.